welcome to lecture video number eight of this video series and in this video we will solve some problems so the first problem of today is from just 2012 and the problem states that consider an ideal gas of mass m at temperature t1 which is mixed isobarically i.e. at constant pressure with an equal mass of the same gas at temperature T2 in a thermally insulated container. What is the change of entropy of the universe? So this is a problem of isobaric process. We will learn about these thermodynamic processes in more detail in the next video. But for this video, let us do the problem in a simpler way. So, isobaric process means that the pressure is constant. So, we will have the heat exchanged which is dq given by n cp dt where dq is the heat exchanged n is the number of moles of gas cp is the molar specific heat at constant pressure and dt is the change in temperature. So, we have that our gas is an ideal gas, the mass is n. Okay. So, for the gas 1, it goes from temperature T1 and the another gas which is given in the question is of equal mass. So, this also have mass m and it goes from T2. So, let us write that gas 1, the initial temperature there is T1 and gas 2, the initial temperature there will be T2 and the final temperature Tf for both the gases, let us assume that it is T. Now since the gases are mixing, the final temperature will be same for both the gases. Okay, so what will be the change in entropy delta S for the gas 1? Let us remove it by delta S1. This is integration from initial to final state dq over t, and we can write dq from this equation as n cp dt over t from i to f. Now, since the integration is over t, we can write the limit to be from t i to t f and this integration will simply give us 
NCP constant TI TF from TI to TF TT over T. So, our delta S1 will be NCP ln TF by TI. Now, if we substitute the value of TF and TI, we will get NCP ln T over T1. So, let me put a box around this answer. Okay. Now, we can similarly calculate the change in entropy for gas 2 also. So, let us denote it by delta S 2 and this integration will be from T 2 to T in CP dt over T which will simply give us we can use this formula from here which should give us NCP T by T 2 oh sorry there will be an in term here it will be ncp ln t over t2 so let me put a box around this also okay so what will be the total change of the universe? Let us denote it by delta S and that will be delta S1 plus delta S2. And this we can obtain, but before that we have to do two things. First, we have to obtain T which is the final temperature both for both the gases, we have to obtain that T in terms of T1 and T2. And secondly, in Cp, these terms, the number of moles and the molar specific heat, these are not given in the questions, so we have to write it. in terms of the mass of the gas and the specific heat per unit mass let us denote it by small c subscript p okay so the second part we can do easily we can write n c p as m small c p here n is the number of moles, c is the molar specific heat at constant pressure, m is the mass of the gas which is given in the question and cp is the specific heat per unit mass. So, we can do it easily and delta S1 will be m small cp ln T over T1 and delta S2 will be m small cp ln T over T2. Now, let us do the first part which is obtaining T in terms of T1 and T2. So, first we need to see that there are two gases. So, they are in different temperature. So, one of the gas, suppose gas 1 will give some heat and gas 2 will receive that heat in such a way that they are equilibrated at a final temperature Tf. So, we can use the fact that heat given or loss is equal to the T 
heat gained and we can write it as m small cp t2 minus t equal to m small cp t minus t1 and here this m cp and we will obtain t2 minus t equal to t minus t1 which will give us t is equal to t1 plus t2 over 2. So, let me put a box around this also. Okay. So, this equation, this is written with the case in mind that T2 is greater than T1. So, this will give us the heat loss and this will give us the heat gain. Okay. So, now we have T in terms of T1 and T2. Now, to get the answer, we can write delta S is delta S1 plus delta S2 and they both have m cp in common so you can take that out and they will have tail n t over t1 plus l n t over t2 so this will be m cp l n t square over T1, T2. And we can put the form of T equal to T1 plus T2 over 2, which will give us T square over T1, T2 to be T1 plus T2 whole square by for t1 t2 and we can write it in a simpler form as delta s equal to mcp ln t1 plus t2 over 4t1 t2 and the top part is square term so another simpler notation will be 2 mcp t1 t2 ln of t1 t2 2 root t1 t2 okay so this is our final answer which gives the change in entropy of the universe is 2m cp ln t1 plus t2 by root of t1 P2 times 2. So let me put a box around our answer. So this is our answer. And if we see the options given, we will see that the first option resembles our answer. So this is the correct answer okay so this is the first problem of today's video now we move to the second problem okay welcome to the second problem of today's video and this problem appeared in iisc entrance exam of 2007 so the problem states that a flask containing one mole of oxygen gas is known to contain a mixture of oxygen atoms and oxygen molecules. The specific heat of the gas is found to be 
17 are by 10 where r is a gas constant the number in one of the oxygen atoms and the number in two of the oxygen molecules are in the ratio we have to find n1 by n2 so let us go through the problem once again we have one mole of oxygen gas where oxygen atoms and O2 molecules are in N1 over N2 ratio and it is given that the it is given that the molar specific heat at constant volume of these gases is 17 R over 10. So, with these informations in hand, we have to calculate N1 over N2. So, let us start. The molar specific heat of oxygen atoms at constant volume, the molar specific heat will be 3 by 2R. How are you obtaining this formula? Because we know that CV is equal to nothing but F by 2R. So, we are using that formula directly and uh, taking into account the fact that for a single molecule, there are 3 degrees of freedoms which implies f is equal to 3 in this case and that is how we obtain this formula. Similarly, the molar specific heat at constant volume of oxygen molecules that will be Cv equal to pi bar by 2. How? Because we can consider oxygen molecules to be rigid diatomic molecules and for this F will be 5. So, there will be 5 degrees of freedom. These things again were discussed in detail in lecture 1 and 2. So, you can refer to that for detailed calculation. I will just use the results here. So, we have let denote this as Cv1 and this is as Cv2 where Cv1 is the molar specific heat at constant volume of oxygen atoms and Cv2 is the molar specific heat at constant volume of oxygen molecules. So, what will be the molar specific heat of the gas mixture? That is the question. So, we can easily obtain that by taking the average of this molar specific heat, but we cannot take simply just the average because the amount of oxygen atoms and amount of oxygen molecules are not the same. There are 
in one moles oxygen atom here and in two moles oxygen molecules here in such a way that n1 plus n2 is equal to 1 because the total gas content is 1 mole. So, we have to take a weighted average here and that will be n1 times Cv1 plus n2 times Cv2 by n1 plus n2 and we can write this as n1 3r over 2 plus n2 5r over 2 and from the question it is given that this is equal to 17r over 10. Now this is just simple algebra and we will just quickly do that. We have in one three R by two plus in two five R by two equal to seventeen R by ten. So here the R's will cancel out on each side and the two will cancel out to give five at the bottom. Now, we can write this as 3n1 plus, sorry, that will be 5n2 equal to 17 by 5. We can again write this as, we can take the 5 in the left hand side, then that will be 15 n1 plus 25 n2 equal to 17. Now we have to remember that we need to obtain n1 by n2 and from this equation only let me put a box around this equation. From this equation only we cannot obtain that. So we have to do a little trick here and that is we will use the fact that n1 plus n2 is equal to 1 and we will write 17 is equal to 17 n1 plus 17 into and we will plug this expression in the boxed out equation here. So, let us proceed. We will have 15 n1 plus 25 n2 equal to 17 n1 plus 17 n2 which will give us 25 minus 17 into equal to 17 minus 15 in 1 thus in 1 over in 2 will be 25 minus 17 by 17 minus 15. So, this will be 8 by 2 or 4. So, we obtain the answer here that n1 by n2 is equal to 4 or n1 is 2 n2 is equal to 4 is to 1. So, let me put a box around our answer.
So this is the answer. And now if we look at the options that were given, we see that the option C resembles our answer. So this is the correct answer. Okay. So this is the second problem of today's video. Okay, welcome to the third problem of this video. So this problem appeared in IXC exam of 2007. 2007 and the problem states that consider oxygen gas at room temperature and pressure and assume that only translational and rotational motions of the molecules contribute to the specific heat. If Cp and Cv denote respectively specific heats at constant pressure and volume, then the ratio Cp by Cv is. Okay, so let us begin. So the problem states that we have oxygen. oxygen molecules and we have to calculate Cp over Cv. So in other terms this is the adiabatic index which we have to calculate and the oxygen molecules are in room temperature and pressure. such that only translational and rotational degrees of freedom is activated okay so earlier in some problems we have calculated that for an non-rigid diatomic molecule f is 6 and for an rigid diatomic molecule F is 5. Here F is the degrees of freedom like we have discussed. So when we did these problems we calculated the degrees of freedom by taking the degrees of freedom of each atom into account but here in the question it has given that translational and rotational degrees of freedom of the molecule is activated so we will see that how to calculate the degrees of freedom by taking the motion of the molecule into account so this be the molecule so our earlier calculation was like that. Uh, let us do the rigid diatomic molecule. So for rigid diatomic molecule, this atom, which is on the left, have three degrees of freedom corresponding to motion along x, y, and z. And this atom will also have three degrees of freedom corresponding to motion along x, y, and z. So total three plus three degrees of freedom, and there is one constraint, which is that the distance between the atoms had to be fixed. So, the total degrees of freedom was 5. 
but if we consider the molecule only as a single entity then also we can see that if we consider only the translational and rotational degrees of freedom we will have five degrees of freedom how that is done we will see in a moment okay so the whole molecule can move in any direction so let me write it here which implies three translational degrees of freedom and also if we consider the rotation of the molecules then it can rotate like this or it can rotate also like this so we will have two rotational degrees of freedom so total degrees of freedom f will be 3 plus 2 equal to 5 and that's how we obtain that uh, the total degrees of freedom will be 5 by taking into account the motion of the molecule only and when we take into account the motion of the constituent atoms we obtain the same answer so now let us use the formula for a diabetic index directly which is gamma equal to 1 plus 2 over f and we can put the value of f equal to 5 and we will obtain the value of gamma which is cp over cp is equal to 7 over 5 so that is our answer and if we look at the options here we will find that option d is the correct answer okay so this was the third problem of today's video okay so we have done three problems in this video and i think uh, we have done enough exercise for uh, calculating cpcv the diabetic index and also calculating the change in entropy so those kind of problems are i think complete now and from the next video onwards we'll do something else so from the next video we'll learn and two problems of different thermodynamic processes specifically we will learn about isobaric isoporic isothermal and a diabetic process and what is the work done the heat exchange and change in inter internal energy in this in those processes and then we will learn about Carnot engine its efficiency and we will also do problems from these topics okay so this is the end of today's video from the next video we will learn about thermodynamic processes
ओके बाय